Hi everyone, today I will be reading my third story, Blessing. This story is based on my Labrador, Blessing Fudge Philander. There is a house on 16 Just Main Street between the colors apricot, dull orange, and lightly tanned skin. It is tough to determine what color it is, and I'm not only saying that because my vision is darker than that of a human's. This house is the house in which I live. You must be wondering why my name is Blessing and not Rascal, Wolftooth, Pesky, or even Rex. It's because, well, I was a blessing. How come? Don't worry, I'll tell you. The sky was dark, pitch black as a matter of fact, like the sponges under my paws. The stars hung in the sky and winked at the earth below. I was at my owner's house with all my other siblings. That Friday night, a car stopped at our house. The man who drove that car was working for some security company. His wife had, had came along as well. The reason for their arrival was that he received a false alarm from our house. My owner apologized for the misunderstanding. I was young at the time and can only remember bits and pieces of my story. I remember how the air smelled like dog urine, my brother's. His has a smell that burns the inside of your nose. I also knew that somewhere a cat was hiding behind the house. I could smell her. My sense of smell is quite impeccable. Though, what I didn't detect was that I was going to get a new owner. In fact, it took place that very night. My owner picked me up from all my brothers and sisters and handed me over to my new family as if I were cheap ham. I don't know if he picked me because of my shining golden armor of fur, or perhaps my deep dark chocolate eyes hypnotized him, or maybe it was just my ability to stand out between anything, even diamonds. They were shocked to see my owner offer me to them, and so was I. And to top it all off, they gave me away for free. I'm worth much more than diamonds, yet he placed me in the hands of strangers without labeling a price on me. Why? I don't know. That's what makes it a blessing. Another thing that I didn't perceive was that I was going to love my new family. Carmi, according to me, Mommy, was my new owner. She had always wanted a puppy, but instead she got a royal canine with a coat made of pure gold with a heart of a lion. We were six in all, living under one roof. Well, eight, if you included me and Jasmine, the daddy long legs that lived in the top corner of the kitchen. Grandma, Carmi's mom, had brown wine red hair with bouncy curls. Papa was the driver who had escorted me to my new house that night. Ziti, don't worry, it's just a nickname, was Carmi's nephew. And lastly, we have great granny and great pups, Carmi's grandparents. We were a happy family if you, dis if you subtracted me. Everyone adored me. Everything adored me. But soon the perspective towards me changed due to my slight personality changes. I sat in front of the big window in the TV room. I waited and waited and waited even more. Six hours? More like six days. Then, finally, a white car stopped in front of our house. My owner, carrying her backpack, stepped out of the car, along with her mother and father. I tried. I really did to stay calm. But they have been gone for too long. How else am I going to show my joy other than grabbing a shoe, sometimes even something I found in the trash can, and strutting with it in my mouth while wagging my tail with overexcitement? I searched the house in a split second. Jackpot! I found Grandma's blue sneaker. The front door opened and I began to prance. As per usual, they applauded and chanted my name with praise. Years had passed, maybe four or five. I was no longer cute, angel-like blessing. I was a mighty, sovereign, short-tempered blessing Fudge Philander. Carmi decided on my second name due to my love of Fudge. I was adorable on the outside, but ferocious on the inside. No one dared to mess with me, and I was in charge. If I wanted tea, you brought it. If I needed you to carry me to the bedroom, you did it. 
If I needed you to lift me onto the kitchen table, it is better than being on the carpet, then you shall obey. The only reason why I seemed so harmless and adorable was because of my unexplainable height. Seriously, I'm only almost a foot in height when standing on all fours, even though my mom is a Labrador, not small, and my dad is a German Shepherd, also not small. Am I not supposed to grow or at least be an inch taller? Either way, I'm still gorgeous. I might not have my parents' height, but I certainly have my dad's tail, nose and neck, and my mom's eyes and ears and golden fur. We were in the TV room. Everyone had placed their rear ends on their usual seats. My adorable backside belonged on my owner's lap. I had intentionally left a permanently deep, 15 centimeter wide dent in her left thigh. It was my seat. I walked up to her and placed my cheekless face onto her lap. She was not able to resist and carefully lowered me into my seat. I soon fell asleep. Shortly after, I heard something. I quickly leapt from her lap and looked through the window. It was a semi-white dog across the street. I barked. They all told me to hush. I saw a grey and white cat leap over the cement wall. I barked. They yelled with anger for me to shut my fudge hole. They continued to watch their Indian series on Starlight. I saw a leaf rustle in the wind. I think it was green. I barked. Now they were so upset that all of them, even Pops who was at work, harmonized the tune of rage for me to keep quiet simultaneously. I sat in front of Carmi. She looked at me, trying to find out what I wanted. It was a glass of cold fresh water. The one in the corner was half an hour old. She got up to get me a clean glass. She placed a silver glass, yes, it was a silver glass, in front of me. I took 11 licks, refreshing. That first day that I entered the house, everyone was head over flip-flops, boots, slippers, or even crocs, but never heels. However, things changed. They loved me but were often annoyed by my unnecessary high-pitched, very alarming barking. Dad would have been so proud. They would get upset when I want to attack the guests. It seems like they've never heard of stranger danger. They would rethink what they should name me. Blessing didn't seem to suit me anymore. They soon thought of me as a burden, until something horrible happened, something that left the entire household in great shock. The day was calm, the sun was out, the sky was a bright shade of blue, and the scene was perfect for an unexpected pit bull attack. My golden fur had its fifth grooming that week. I was devouring my fluffy white rice and boneless chopped up chicken, lightly heated that bathed in a tub of sauce and greasy oils, which contributed to the shine in my coat. I was washed down I washed down my breakfast with a tempered cup of Nescafe's black roast coffee. Carmi took me out to do my business in the afternoon. I took my time to sniff every individual plant before I showered them with a stream of yellow. I lifted my leg against a mint plant, a tomato tree, a bin, some rocks, and a few unsuspecting stones. Carmi was waiting for me to hurry up, but nature takes time. She rolled her eyes in such a way that I could only see her white for ten whole seconds. All I wanted to do that day was to relax on my owner's lap for 45 minutes without any disturbance. Across the street lived a black and white pit bull. He was ferocious, more than me. Dangerous and wicked-minded. However, I was not by any chance afraid of this so-called pit bull. I was outside in the front yard, unsupervised to wash off the plants. They needed a good shower. That was when the devilish canine broke loose and targeted me, a vulnerable Labrador, Labrador with a great self-esteem. I was not afraid, not at all, so I came right at him. Unfortunately, his massive mouth had caught hold of my head. Yes, my whole head. My head was just an almond compared to his. I felt like I was going to die, 
I didn't feel this way because I thought he was going to slice my head right off. But his breath reeked. Not even a fly would be able to survive in such a pungent, murderous odour. It was a miracle for me to get out there alive. I was free from his tight jaws. However, I don't know how, but he had caught hold of my right rabbit-like foot. Grandma had come out in a panic to rescue me. Let me quickly grab the most expensive paintbrushes, some lovely paint, and a nice big canvas so that I can paint the scene for you with the, most, the utmost detail and vivid colors. This fight scene took place outside the yard in front of the massive tree. Grandma was holding my body in mid-air, while the pit bull strangled my white-tipped foot. She was trying her absolute best to free me from the killing machine's powerful jaws. I had never experienced anything so horrible in my life, besides the taste of cheap Viennas. Mommy was unaware of all of this. When she came running out, her mind was not functioning quick enough to respond in any way to this brutal occurrence. The owner of the pit bull tried to loosen his beast jaws from around my small paw. And suddenly, I was free. No, do not for a single split second think I just stood there in agony to do such a minor attack. I bit his neck without any hesitation. I would have done worse, but Grandma picked me up just in time and took me inside. Carmen looked at my bleeding neck. She stared at me, and within two seconds, she shed her very first tears that day. It was as if I was watching the Great Wall of China come crumbling down after all, all of its years of strength and endurance. I was crying too. I was crying because the stench of the pit bull saliva still rested in my nostrils. I was taken to the vet and had to stay there overnight. Not the first time, but I still hated it. At the vet, they didn't serve me a bowl of freshly, freshly popped pop, popcorn lightly dusted with the icing sugar or a packet of Mexican chili-flavored Simba chips, my favorite. There was not a snack table decked with cubes of full cream butter, cheddar cheese, or even chocolate-flavored Crunchalot cereal. No. The only thing you got was a bottle of injections to make you fall asleep. After a few hours, I was back where I belonged in the dent I left in Carmi's leg. The whole household was still sad, even Jasmine, the spider. No one felt like eating while I was in such a condition. I barely let out a bark. They treated me like royalty, so nothing much had changed. However, there was a couple of changes that took place due to the incident. Because of the pit bull's continuous breakouts, I could not go in the, into the front yard Instead, I had to go into the backyard, and even that was taking a risk. During the time, I was unable to move around in excitement, bark with anger or joy, or even pick up a shoe. They realized how important I was in their family. Who else would keep the criminals away at night, or the unexpected and uninvited guest whom you don't want to have a conversation with, because you are about to watch your afternoon soapies? Who else would entertain you when you come back from work? Who else would shower your shoes in saliva or lick the bathroom floor? Maybe I shouldn't have said that last part. They changed their perspective towards me. I was no longer just blessing the dog who just was just given away or the unfriendly and irritating Labrador with a slightly rat-like face. I was blessing Fudge Philander, the dog who was not fearful to stand up against an untamed canine canine twice his size, and who carried the heart of a lion. I was a blessing. Most of the time we complain, or we are unappreciate, unappreciative for what we have. We do not notice the little things that add color to our lives. The moment that thing is taken away, you only then see how dull life has become. Anything good that unexplainably comes, comes your way is a blessing. You must not take it for granted or dismiss it. The little things around you might be your blessing. You just haven't noticed yet. Thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that story. And that Hi, my name is Carmen Philander. I'm 14 years old and I wrote the book, Bye. Amber Pets. You can order my book online. It consists of 25 short stories. And at the end of each story is a very valuable lesson.
So my first story I will be reading is This is reality, yeah, this, this, this is my family, yeah, this, this, this is reality, yeah, this, this, this is my family.